of uh, vertex operator algebra associated to a four manifold and a Lie algebra E1. So in general, there was some kind of prediction from physics that there exists uh, for any smooth oriented four manifold and G, which is a simply laced or E1, one can construct vertex spirit algebra, which uh, should depend on the um, kind of topology and uh, possibly smooth structure of four manifold. So in the case when the G is U1, and uh, so again here we assume that for simplicity that uh, it's uh, simply connected, but it possibly can have some boundary. Uh, in general, non trivial. And uh, so it has a, uh, it can be uh, constructed as follows. So it can be understood as a Heisenberg. So first you take a Heisenberg VOA, which we defined before for the real vector space. So Heisenberg VOA, the input is a real vector space with a symmetric pairing. So in this case, this uh, real vector space is a homology with real coefficients in degree zero and four. And there is natural pairing here, even by intersection between zero and four cycles. And, uh, and then we take a lattice VOA to the for the lattice lambda, which is a second homology lattice, which uh, by the following, by the first by Poincaré Schutz duality, it can be related by relative cohomology lattice. And this can be understood since there is no torsion. This can be understood as a lattice inside a real vector space of uh, second homology with real coefficients. Okay. So before, before, uh, so this is uh, 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 the following vertex spirit algebra. Before we proceed, let me make the following remark, general remark about vertex, uh, about representation theory of vertex spirit algebras. So the, uh, the modules, of uh, of a VOA form uh, braided monoidal category with respect to a, what is called fusion product tensor product. So this is not uh, the usual tensor product of vectors. It, 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 the, the, the module obtained by this fusion is not a tensor product. As a, as a vector space, not just a tensor product, but there is a certain notion of uh, tensor product, which is called sometimes called fusion. And uh, more, uh, so under some assumptions, which include uh, of uh, semi-simplicity. So this category, this category is semi-simple and there is a finite number of objects, of simple objects. And uh, more with some non-degeneracy non conditions. Uh, this uh, is a, has a kind of a more rigid structure. This is a, a structure of uh, uh, what is called a modular tensor category. And uh, so in general, this doesn't have this uh, kind of uh, more simple structure of model tensor category. 
so, but uh, in many cases, even if uh, the, the kind of the category, uh, the representation category, like the full representation category of VOA is, uh, can be rather wild, but there, sometimes there, there is an MTC can be a, a certain sub, a, a certain subclass of representations which are uh, closed under this fusion product and they form, uh, they can form a model of tensor category in, in, inside this, uh, inside this larger, the, the whole category. And this kind of, uh, this, this structure of model tensor category is, for example, important in constructions of invariant of three manifolds by Richard Dijon to right construction. So in principle, any, for example, any model tensor category can give you uh, an invariant of three manifold. And uh, so in this case, we can indeed consider a certain uh, class of representations which will form a modular tensor category. And uh, so these will be the following models of this uh, VOA. So what we done by M mu. So, so as in the, in the, so we already, in principle, we kind of already seen them, so they will be labeled by the elements of the cassette, the lattice divided by the dual lattice, and uh, they will be just uh, given, so here I take, first I take just this Heisenberg VOA by itself, is the first part for H0 plus H4, and here I uh, consider the, uh, the module of this VOA, which, uh, as you remember, it was constructed by uh, kind of the sum of, uh, so I do a sum of elements of the lattice shifted by this element mu of uh, Fox space, labeled by lambda H2. Constructed from this, uh, constructed Fox space for the Heisenberg algebra, constructed for this vector space is appearing. So essentially, here I take a kind of a vacuum module, and here I take a module, so this lattice view. Right? And uh, so, since we know that the, uh, so lambda is, uh, can be five with the second, uh, Cohomology, uh, well, let's say less, sec second um, homology lattice and lambda star, then can be identified with just H2 and 4 uh, with integer coefficients. And uh, the quotient is just from the uh, long exact sequence of the, of the cohomology, of the relative cohomologies. You can see that this is the same as, uh, can be said with H1 of uh, M3, the boundary of, uh, of my three manifold, of, of my four manifold, which is a three manifold. Yeah. So you see, uh, so this is the, uh, the, uh, the uh, at least the, the kind of, um, so the, okay. So let me, f let me, f Make the form sense. So you see, this kind of already the set of these labels they depend only on the boundary. So in general, so I can make more uh, kind of uh, uh, a, strong, a stronger statement as a category. So modules M uh, uh, lambda. Okay, they they also in principle they also has this label U one. M4 form a modular tensor category, which we will denote uh, kind of modular tensor category labeled by U1 and M3, which uh, depends only on the topology of the boundary. So 
so in this particular case, when it's U1, it actually depends only on homotopy class from four. It will de depend on, on the, the kind of, as a the kind of the fusion, the tensor, pro, the tensor product structure on this category will depend on, in this particular case when this is U1, will depend on the kind of link, some linking uh, par pairing on the, uh, on the H1. But this is something which uh, should be generalized for, for any G. So you can construct, uh, there, there should be some vector superior algebra associated with manifold, but it's, uh, the, the category of its representations, maybe we can, uh, in general, one should restrict the representation to some nice subclass. The category of its, its representation should depend only on the, on the boundary of, the, uh, of this four manifold. Uh, it's quite restrictive. So usually, so this is something like called rational vertex operator algebras. But it's, uh, well, this is a case usually most studied. Usually the, the, the most simple examples of vertex operator algebras, they are of this uh, rational type. Uh, yes, but, uh, well, yeah, this will be, uh, definitely not uh, in this, uh, from, from this, but here, yeah, so, so here we consider, I mean, si since, uh, M M3 was, uh, simply, simply, simply connected in this case, this is. Yeah, for example, if you, uh, like in, in, in there are some examples when uh, the boundary is something like S2 times S1, and there is a representation, card. Yeah, it's not a rational, you don't get a rational vertex operator algebra. And uh, so this kind of, uh, the fact that the representation, uh, representation theory for this vertex operator algebra associated for manifold only depends on this boundary, nicely reconciles with the fact that we can uh, glue, uh, kind of, uh, there is some gluing prescription for vertex operator algebra associated for, for manifold. So consider uh, a case, for example, not a, for, simple, for technical specifics, consider the case when we want to just consider uh, two uh, kind of four manifolds, M1 and M2, so that, such, such that uh, uh, the boundary of, uh, so the, 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 the boundary, are, they, they have a connected, the boundary just has one connected component, and uh, so the, the boundary of the first is uh, some three manifold, M3, and the boundary of the second is uh, the same thing with opposite orientation. And uh, then there is a statement that, so in this uh, case, uh, and suppose, so M4, let M4 be M1 glued with uh, M2 along M3. And so, uh, so it's not, uh, it's not, it's not going to be just a tensor product. So if you, if you glue this, it's not going to be just a tensor product of vertex operator algebras associated uh, to uh, the species, but uh, it will be the following sum of uh, uh, tensor products. So, uh, so as, we, as, we, as we saw, you, one can label uh, the modules of vertex operator algebra for both uh, basic pieces by H1 of M3 with integer coefficients. So here, in this case, this is a finite group. And we take M E1 mu of M4 of uh, M4 and that is M minus E1. Uh, 
and it's easy to verify that uh, this is indeed, uh, I mean, this, tends, uh, this kind of combination forms uh, a nice, uh, forms, a, forms a vertex of period algebra. So, so in general, you cannot just take a, like, take a direct sum of a bunch of models and say this is a really new vertex of period algebra. But uh, there's particular sums which you can do. Any questions? Well, uh, here, yes, in, in the in the one case, you only use cohomology. You, you use intersection pairing on cohomology. Yes. Well, in this case, yes, yeah, this one case, it's uh, something very simple. But it's a nice kind of example where you can consider all the structures which you appear. So now I want uh, to consider a little bit different thing. So, so I want to consider what is called a multi-monopole invariance, but uh, which are can, kind of generalization of the hyperquitter invariance. So before, the, before doing this, so I want to review uh, what are the hyperquitter invariance. And uh, so they already appeared, uh, for example, in uh, Lotter's lectures. But uh, so I will, I will want to go in a bit detail because I will need this those details to consider this generalization. Uh, so now let me assume that, uh, so now M4 will be closed. It doesn't have any boundary for simplicity. So let me remind you what is the spin C structure, a spin C structure on uh, M4 so is a lift of uh, uh, SF4, so SF4 bundle, which is a uh, the principal bundle of uh, orthonormal frames, orthonormal frames in the in the tangent bundle. Uh, uh, to spin C4 principal bundle with respect to projection, with respect to map uh, spin C4 to SO4. So, so spin C4 is, is a, by definition is a spin four times C1 divided by Z diagonal Z2. But in this particular case when this is we have four here. This is also can be uh, understood as SU2 times SU2, uh, product of two copies of SU2, which I will denote by minus and plus to distinguish them. And uh, divide by the canal Z2. Okay, and uh, so this, uh, this the whole group can be mapped uh, to uh, so I can just uh, project it to U1 divided by Z2, which is isomorphic to U1 itself. And, uh, but I can also project it to uh, SU2 times C, one of the SU2s times U1 times Z2. And uh, I project to SU2 plus minus, plus or minus times U1 divided by Z2, which is uh, some U2 group. And uh, so then uh, let me denote by L, it's a line bundle, it's a complex line bundle associated to, uh, uh, to the U1 principal bundle, which we obtain by this projection.
and uh, uh, w plus minus, this will be complex rank two bundles associated uh, by fundamental representation uh, to u2 plus minus principal bundles. So this, uh, this is often co called determinant bundle and these are, these are wild spinner bundles. And this is wild spinner. So now, uh, so again, we want to assume either we want to assume kind of that uh, for my fault, simply let's assume that a kind of a, a big weaker, weaker condition that it's not simply connected, but the cohomology. Uh, the, the first cohomology with integer coefficients is zero, then the uh, set of spin state structures uh, is uh, on M4, which is denoted by, can be done by spin C of M4, uh, can be described as follows. So this is a set of elements of second cohomology lattice with the condition that lambda is the same as second Stiefel Whitney class of the tangent bundle uh, mod two. And so this, this lambda has a meaning as the first term class of the line bundle. Of the determinant line bundle. Any questions? So we also want to we want, we, we want to use the following relation. If I take a tensor product of uh, W bundle with W bundle, this will be, uh, this can be decomposed as a, as a bundle of uh, cell dual two forms on a four manifold of tensored with C. So this is some rank three complex bundle plus the, uh, con the uh, trivial rank one complex bundle. Well, they're associated to, uh, the, yeah, to the certain representations. Okay. So this is associated to a determinant representation. This is associated to two-dimensional representations, which you obtain by, you can, there is a map uh, homomorphism from spin C4 to U2, two, differ, two different homomorphisms, which uh, can be used to construct this uh, two-dimensional. By using the fundamental representation of this U2, you construct this. These W, well, if uh, if there is a yeah, so uh, well, at least the other way it works. If you have complex, almost complex structure, you can there there is a canonical spin there, there is a canonical spin system. Okay. Okay. So now. Uh, so now, now we want to consider, so before considering the question, so let, let A be to be a connection on line bundle L. So locally it can be given by some one form. And uh, so this, uh, uh, so this defines, this also defines connections on uh, W plus minus, 
by, by also using the uh, kind of, if choose, we choose some metric and choose leverage with a connection. Uh, so together with A, this defines connections on W plus minus. And uh, by Psi, let Psi be a, a section of uh, W plus. So here I forgot to write, so you, you take a conjugate, complex conjugate. Then the double equation equations are the following equations. So let me write it as follows. So okay, let me explain the part. The part. So this is a Dirac operator. So in general, Dirac operator uh, can be considered as a map from W plus or minus to W minus plus. And uh, so this is a uh, cell del part of uh, curvature of uh, connection A. So this equation, so this equation is equation in uh, on sections of gamma, gamma W minus. So because psi was a section of gamma W plus, and this is a uh, equations in a in a section of lambda two plus t star m. So again here, so in general, as I showed you before, so if I take uh, sections, the the so this tensor product will be a, a will be a section of in a, a W plus standard W plus bar, which we can decompose into a, this bundle plus a, plus a trivial bundle. So and here the plus means we just take a projection to this bundle. And uh, then the uh, so you can get the solutions. So this equation is known by B. So this will be a subspace in connections of L times sections of W plus. And, but uh, let me, so this is some technical subtlety. So I want to consider only a subspace, a certain subspace in the space subspace where uh, the psi is not identically zero. Solutions where psi doesn't vanish. The section that is not uh, globally, is not, is not zero everywhere. And uh, uh, then there is a, on this uh, space, kind of on this subspace of this larger space, there is a free action. Uh, of the gauge group, the gauge group can be answered the maps from M4 to U1. And uh, then, then one can consider the following quotient, M. Uh, so M will depend on lambda, which is the uh, class, which is the first chain class, so we fix our line bundle L, first chain class L is a quotient B divided by this G. And uh, so, okay, maybe I shouldn't erase this completely. And there is a, 
well, there is an important theorem in this theory of the equation that uh, for generic for generic metric and uh, if b2 plus is strictly greater than one uh, uh, this is actually a manifold is a manifold orientable or it's orientable manifold of expected dimension which uh, can be given by the index theorem and it's given by the following formula it's, uh, lambda square minus uh, 3 sigma plus 2 kappa divided by 4 But uh, okay, let me make it for, sometimes it's not uh, convenient to work with generic metric. So often people consider, instead of considering generic matter, people consider a certain uh, perturbation, what is called perturbation. So they add some generic, instead of considering generic matter, they add a generic perturbation, which is uh, some self dual two form. And. Uh, Well, kind of the, there are some other topological information. There are some uh, classes you can calculate, which uh, which will be actually the, these environments. Ah. But does it have a boundary? Is it compact? That's a piece of yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a compact. It's a com it's a com does it have a boundary? No, I don't. It's not done. It's a, uh, yes. More was it, there is a yeah there is a conjecture that uh, it's uh, well it's actually non-empty only when it has a dimension dimension there only no, it's only non-empty when its dimension is zero so it's, it's actually just a bunch of points Well, there is a this is a this is a conjecture. Yes. Ah, I see. And more, so it's uh, kind of uh, the same is that if you change a metric, uh, the m lambda in this larger space where it's uh, kind of embedded, this quotient with larger space divided by the gauge group is uh, uh, will change will will, will be. Uh, uh, the, We'll, we'll, we'll change, there will be some co cobordism between the different amounts for different metrics inside, inside the ambient space which I erased. Okay. So, okay, so how one defines uh, this ubiquitous invariance? Uh, so there is a universal line bundle over this uh, product of M4 and uh, lambda such that uh, if I restrict it, so it takes a particular point in the model space and there, so this bundle on M4 is, is uh, coincides with my line bundle, the German line bundle L and uh, one can see the projection here to uh, the modular space and uh, then I can consider the class U which is uh, the push forward respect of projection to the uh, class in cohomology of uh, four manifold Poincare dual to a point cup product with uh, first chain class of uh, Lambda here, uh, and uh, uh, so this this gives me an element in cohomology of mu lambda with integral coefficients. 
so this has a degree 4, which I integrated over m4. This gives me a class here. And uh, then, uh, so then uh, the Abbott invariance, so it's a map from the set of spin C structures for manifold to integer, integers, and is given by its value is given by the following integ integral. So there is a so-called simple type conjecture. Uh, that uh, this modular space is there empty unless the virtual dimension of lambda, which is coincides with actual dimension, is uh, zero. Well, again, this is uh, when B2 plus is greater than 1. So you don't actually, so if you are, like, according to the simple type of you don't actually need to integrate any classes. You just count with some signs a number of points. So there's some natural orientation on this, on this modular space. And you, can, you count just a number of points with signs. Okay, any questions? You said B2 plus? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So now, uh, so now we want to generalize it uh, to what's called multi monopole invariants. So as before, so A, so the setup will be essentially the same as before. So A will be still the connection on this determinal line bundle L. But now instead of the single uh, field psi, we take uh, N uh, sections of uh, W plus bundle. And we can see the equations which uh, called multi-monopole equations. It's kind of very natural generalization. And so if we take just a sum here, and uh, we have a Dirac uh, equation for all i from one to n on, on each on each of these sections. So, from physics point of view, you kind of modify your your matter. Kind of, if you consider this coming from the topological twisted n equals two theory with the one gauge theory. So the usual ambiquitin invariance has uh, just a single charged uh, hypermultiplet, and this has n uh, charged hypermultiplets. Okay. So again, when you can see the solutions, there will be a bn, a certain subspa uh, subspace uh, in the space of connections. Again, uh, let me uh, uh, restrict it on a subspace at least uh, one psi i for a certain index is not identically zero. It's not zero everywhere. It's not a zero section. And uh, so one can consider this uh, 
the, model, the corresponding model space, which is a quotient of the gauge group as before. So now it has the expected dimension a bit different, but it uh, also can be easily calculated by the index theorem as the following formula. So as before, chi and sigma are L, sorry, I didn't mention it explicitly, but I assume everybody uh, can know. So chi is L characteristic of uh, M4 and sigma is a signature. And lambda square is an intersection, self-intersection of this class lambda. So also it's not uh, explicit, so this is actually always uh, an integer. Okay. And uh, the problem, now there is a problem. Uh, that uh, the space is non is uh, non-compact. Even if you if you make some assumptions like this, so uh, so in particular, this uh, the integral wouldn't be uh, well defined. Or whatever whatever you want to integrate over the space is not defined. So how one can uh, kind of see uh, non-compactness? Where does this non-compactness come from? And uh, okay, I raised the question. So, uh, well, I'm not gonna consider. So consider some uh, special, at least uh, one can see the non-compactness is, uh, is in some special case. So let, uh, for example, M4 be a spin and uh, with a negative signature. So there, then one can show that there exists, there is a harmonic, by the index theorem, there is a harmonic spinner, xi, which is a section of uh, W plus. And uh, so let me take, so the, if, 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 the four, if the four manifold is spin, one can take one can take line, line bundle to be this line, the determined line bundle to be trivial if it's spin. So, uh, and uh, uh, so the harmonic spinner will satisfy just the usual ordinary Dirac equation. Dirac equation this is zero, and uh, uh, then one can construct the following solution. By taking uh, so so, the, so I want to assume that n is great. So non-compactness should happen when n is at least two. So I, I take my field psi one to be some some complex number uh, times uh, this psi, and psi two to be uh, the same thing times uh, j acting on psi, where j is a certain element of U2 group, well, namely it's uh, something like this, so just squares uh, two minus one. And one can see this is a, uh, this, this is a solution of, uh, this, 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 uh, this will satisfy uh, my equations for any alpha. So this will be one, so this will be zero, and this will be also zero. And so all other all other guys, when i is greater than two, are I take zero. So at least you see there is a one non-compact direction, at least one non-compact di uh, one, one direction where you can go to infinity. 
I mean, one can make a more detailed argument about but here, so at this point, I, I kind of finished, uh, finished the review, kind of the review part, and I started talking about uh, joint work with uh, Dedushenko, Gukov, and myself. Yes. So, so the, this index i tells us that this size corresponds to a representation of some group, linear representation of some group, right? Yes. What is this group? So this n charge hypermultiplex, do they, how do they mix between each other? I guess this is the standard thing for the physicists, but I... Uh, what do I mean? Well, there... So you have well, there, there, there will be some what is called flavor symmetry group, which is actually will be important for us. If, if ah, this, okay, is, but what is this, group? this is SUM, which are. Okay. Okay. So you can, yeah, you can find uh, many various details in that paper. Uh, Okay, uh, so so this is a, this was kind of a very quick uh, argument for non-compactness, and uh, so indeed, uh, so there it's uh, so one can notice that the, there there is a so once we add so in in some sense so once we add edit a new uh, field psi we have this problem of non-compactness, but from the other point of view we, we kind of uh, get something nice in return. Which will help help us is that uh, there is a, so we consider it so that our fields were in this space uh, and there is a well divided by g and there is a natural s u n action on the space, which just acts, uh, uh, so I can understand this equivalently as a, as a uh, sections of uh, gamma w minus tensor at Vcn, and this uh, uh, there is action of Sun here. So I don't consider Un action, because Un action, you want the, the diagonal part of Un acts trivially because it's quotient with respect to G. So there is no, uh, uh, so as a, and uh, so I'm gonna use the symmetry to, uh, to, def to define, to, 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 do, to do integrals equivalent. So in particular, so one can do the following thing, one can consider what is called the covariant, the ubiquitin invariance of n, uh, and of n, n monopole invariants by considering uh, so let T be a maximal torus in this SUM. And I consider T coherent integration of this model space. So in principle, I can integrate any uh, equivalent characteristic class, but uh, there is some kind of one canonical choice is just to integrate one. So then, so in general, whatever I have here, one can uh, one or anything else, or any other acquiring characteristic class. So I can uh, use uh, a Tiabot localization formula. Which kind of, uh, well, non acquiring version, well, the, the version where you take, put acquiring parameters to zero. Uh, uh, appear before, so okay. Let me uh, so 
So what? So first, uh, so let me. I forgot to mention what is this thing depends on. So it depends still on lambda, and it will depend on z, which will be uh, elements. So the the uh, they can they can be understood z. So is the t quadrant homology of a point is uh, generated by parameters. So you you can uh, understand there is natural uh, generators. You can choose n generators, but such that with the relations that they sum up to zero. So your invariant will depend on on this uh, generator of acquiring cohomology of a point, and uh, so the Atiyah-Bot localization formula gives you that you can reduce it to the sum of the integrals over uh, uh, fixed point subsets of of, of our model space. And for each, so you and for each uh, fixed point subset, you do uh, integration of one over equivalent early plus of a normal bundle to C. Questions? Well, if uh, yeah, if you assume, if you assume simple type conjecture, this will be this will be uh, always point. So the fixed locus will actually be uh, the compo in general. The one can argue uh, that the components are isomorphic to uh, just uh, M1, the model space of a single instant. So you can easily see this because uh, uh, well, it's very, kind of for roughly you can see this by uh, saying that only. Uh, so, so this is uh, the, the fixed uh, locus, f fixed point locus, is uh, of course when. Uh, uh, so if you, if you can see the vector of these sections, only uh, is given by uh, configurations where uh, only. One of the fields on the single uh, psi i is not identically zero. Otherwise, so if it, uh, otherwise this this is not the the SUN group will act non-trivially. But for for a single guy, it will multiply it by some, which is by the phase, which uh, the, the phase. But once you consider the quotient respect to the Gaussian summations, this gives this is the same. This will be identified. Well, you have a uh, you, yeah yeah you, you group acts on the on the on the normal bundle, and then you consider well the the kind of uh, you you consider the splitting principle and uh, for each kind of this the the, the normal bundle will form some representation of the group and you just multiply all the weights of this representation. Hmm? Yeah, this is uh, yeah this is what uh, you can. And uh, so, in particular, okay, I don't I have like five minutes left, so let me. Uh, so, uh, so assuming uh, simple type conjecture, Again, so okay, I said it, but I didn't write it. So the statement that it will be uh, so each uh, this the, sim the simple the, the the fixed components. So due to this argument, the simple components are just uh, uh, will be uh, isomorphic to uh, single monopole modulus space, which we denoted by just m lambda before, and. Uh, So 
So assuming simple type conjecture, you can explicitly do this calculation. Well, there are some subtleties of uh, kind of with what, with what orientation they appear here, but you can, you can deal with the subtlety. And uh, so the result is that, uh, so there will be, it's just proportional to be to the Zabekwitton invariant associated to lambda uh, times the following rational function of uh, equivalent parameters. Here is that. So this is uh, essentially the, the, the product of weights of the action on, the, on this. Uh, well, here the normal, the normal bundle to a point will be just a whole tangent space. And uh, the product of G not equal to I, G, I, one lambda squared minus C. Okay, so this is the result. So what, uh, so I promised in the beginning that this should have something to do with uh, vertex operator algebras. So you can already see this is kind of looks like similar, it has structure similar to the correlator in vertex operator algebra which I wrote before. So this is consistent with uh, physics prediction. namely uh, realization of uh, invariants where 6D SCFT on, so this multi-monopole variance on a four manifold times uh, some punctured sphere. So, like to, or what kind of mathematically this means that uh, we want, so the kind of physics predicts that we, we should compare this result with uh, some observable here in 2D, which explicitly given by the following, like using the notations which I introduced before. So, uh, so in terms of uh, this VOAA U1, of M4, this can be written as follows. So this is a dual to the uh, highest weight vector associated to a uh, lattice element lambda. So from physics, you expect the following uh, expression and where S, S plus are certain elements of this VOA of E1, M4. So here they are promoted to fields uh, depending, so here it's, uh, so J promoted to fields using, sta uh, using state field correspondence. So as usual, A of Z is just means the value of this. And, uh, and uh, so more, okay, maybe I shouldn't have erased this method. where, so more explicitly this S of Z is given by the following sum over, so you, you uh, sum lambda over all spin C structures of M4, which can be understood as a uh, kind of subspace in the lattice lambda, given the subspace given by this parity condition uh, of the vertex operator by lambda depending on that times the Zyberquitian variant with lambda 
and uh, so and s plus is such that it has the following so if I multiply it to the vertex operator algebra depending vertex operator depending on w uh, I get there will be the following singular part lambda square minus sigma plus and the rest will be a normal ordered product of these guys. So this kind of uh, the vertex operator algebra they, they kind of provide the uh, relation provide no, no, no kind of natural setting natural setting how to how the the kind of the, the single monopole invariants are related and multi monopole invariants are related uh, to them but kind of and uh, so from other point of view you can see this relation by doing the just uh, uh, this equivalent localization okay my time is up so I'll stop here